Released in 2003 for the PS2, Xbox, and later receiving a PC port, Battle Engine Aquila is one of the more interesting games I've played. Even many lists about hidden gems and obscure games don't usually include it, despite it doing some pretty wild stuff, though it did hit number 86 on IGN's list of the best PS2 games ever made. Taking place on the fictional planet of Ilium, greenhouse gases have caused the ice caps to melt and flood most of the planet. Fighting over the planet's few remaining patches of land are the Forseti and Muspel empires. I think we're humans, but I'm not really sure. The game's plot is incredibly alien and hard to connect with. There's zero mention of Earth or the year, but you don't play Battle Engine Aquila for the story. You pilot the Aquila, an experimental superweapon that's like a transformer with a water allergy. You can swap between a flying jet mode that controls about as you'd expect, or a walking tank. Both modes have different weaponry, and knowing when to use what is the name of the game. Unfortunately, water is as much a threat as the guy shooting at you. Touch it and it's game over. Which, to be fair, was somewhat of a tradition back in the 6th gen. You might be thinking, well if you can fly, what's the problem with dying to water? Just fly over it, dummy. Well, flying uses your limited power reserves. Thankfully they recharge when in walker mode, but this sets up a super interesting gameplay dynamic. Water plays a role in maybe half the levels, so you need to be careful. Keep an eye on that blue gauge and land when appropriate. There's a ton going on here because more than that, as many of the levels are also timed. Typically you'll be defending someone or something, so you need to optimize your pathing to complete the objectives as quickly as possible. We've lost the transport! We've lost the entire convoy. What were you thinking? Another large enemy force is approaching. It looks like those fighters are heading straight for us. Get the battle engine airborne and see what you can do about those fighters. There is a risk to you dying, but most of the time the bigger risk is to your comrades, so you gotta be quick. Put all those mechanics together and you have a remarkably unique gameplay loop unlike anything I've seen. It may sound tedious or confusing, but I promise it's more fun than I make it sound. I'm bad with words, and I'm nervous, and this is one of my first videos. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. So anyway, if you like speedrunning or optimizing routes, or are just a fan of interesting games in general, I think you'll love this one. Battle Engine knows not to overstay its welcome, which extends to its story. I'm gonna be real, I wish this game just didn't bother having one. What's here is pretty dang bad. The cutscenes are brief, poorly written, poorly acted, and don't do much in service of the game. Normally I'd go over the story, but there's just nothing here. You pilot a super weapon, you're on the blue team, and you're fighting the red team, you end up killing all the red team, but mass murder is okay because they're the aggressors. Some of you people had family in that mess, but I need you to stay focused. Focused? They're murdering civilians over there. Calm down, Hawk. We need you to stay cool. We're sending you guys out there soon enough, and we'll all have plenty of opportunity to even the score. So let's get back to the meat and potatoes. There are about 25 levels and occasionally level remixes called Evo missions. Now these EVO missions are a little more difficult because of the tweaks made. Sometimes that means more enemies or different enemies, and sometimes it means different NPC placements. It adds longevity to an otherwise very short game you can complete in a few hours. They're also the only way to see the secret ending. I completed the last EVO mission and got to the final boss, but died to him like 20 times and gave up. I'm sorry, but I got frustrated and called it a day. You'll need to play it for yourself or watch another YouTube video to experience Battle Engine's secrets. So it's not only the gameplay loop that makes this a noteworthy title, but also the amount of NPCs on screen. While you are a super weapon and usually the biggest, baddest dude on the field, you're also one of hundreds. There are infantry squads, tanks, artillery, airships, and battleships all having their own individual combat encounters spread throughout the level. I'm such a sucker for being in the middle of epic battles. That's why I love the Total War series so much. Well, that, and my love of rats with nuclear weapons. One mission may task you with destroying all the enemy tanks and structures while making sure not too many of your own are lost. You have agency on what you'll do first, but it's important to prioritize. Will you head for the factory that's pumping out enemy tanks? Or take out the enemy bombers that are wreaking havoc on your infantry? Choose wisely because although the game is forgiving, it also has some missions that are brutal and demand you plan out your trajectory. The closest approximation I can think of are the Dynasty Warrior games. You are the strongest guy on the field, but you gotta really know where to put yourself. 
Thankfully, your commanders will let you know who needs help, so you're given a pretty good idea of the battlefield and how everyone is faring. You also have a compass on your reticle, and your guys will usually tell you cool things like, hey, enemy bombers approaching to the west, which reminds me of Morrowind. And I just love when games require the player to use their brain a tiny bit, rather than give you a fat marker on the important thing. Enemy forces are breaching the eastern defenses! You have a mini-map on the bottom left that gives you important info on enemy and ally locations. The yellow are critically important objectives, often structures, and the bottom right is the balance of power, which I glanced at like twice in the entire game. So yeah, that one's not really important, but it looks neat. I like the pretty colors. Your UI also includes an enemy health bar of anyone you're shooting at in the top left, and your objectives in the top right. Your reticle includes your energy meter for things like flying, which I've mentioned previously, and your health bar. It's all incredibly intuitive. You also have a fairly generous lock-on for many of your weapons. You have to aim a bit with a machine gun, but the game helps you out, which keeps the shooting fun and loose. Some of these guys are real small. About an hour into the campaign, you'll get access to a few different configurations of the battle engine. Some are better at destroying tanks, while others are good for air targets. If a level is too difficult, it's worth restarting and changing your weapon loadout. Sometimes one of your weapons will have a one-time augmented shot to let off. It's super powerful and one-shots most targets. But I'm gonna be honest, despite finishing the game, I still have no idea what triggers it. I think I got it whenever I dealt a ton of damage to targets, or destroyed many quickly, but I'm not 100% sure. If you know, please let me know in the comments. There are some bosses in the game, and you gotta aim for their weak points. I feel that you died too quickly when you were hit, so I wish you were hit more often, but less damage was dealt, if that makes sense. For example, I'd be at full life and then get game over in one hit from a boss before I even knew what was happening, though that's a small nitpick as it was fairly rare. When you are damaged or need some more ammo, you can land on the specific ship with the circular pad, though this ship isn't present in every level, so just be aware. One of my favorite things to do in this game is to land on top of enemy ships and just unload on them. The game gives you a great sense of mobility. When you start, you'll be pretty clunky and awkwardly moving about the battlefield, but by the end game, you'll be zipping through forces, maximizing your impact, and tearing through enemies. It's a great power fantasy. I played on PC with a widescreen patch, and the game ran well. I used a mouse and keyboard, and the aiming did take a little getting used to, but overall, it never impaired my enjoyment. You can grab Battle Engine Aquila on Steam or GOG for very cheap, and I've included a link to the widescreen patch in the video's description. If it at all looks interesting, I recommend picking it up and being the scariest thing on the battlefield. Thanks for watching.